Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, it is time to revisit Dr. Zakir Naik. Today with a video, in Muslims there are Wahhabis and Sunnis. Whom should we follow? I believe that this is a valid question. Oftentimes nowadays we see that the Wahhabi position is displayed as the orthodox position. But is it truly that? I hope we're going to see it in today's video. With no further ado, let's have a look. Question from a non-Muslim friend of mine. Uh, she is asking me like, uh, within you Muslims itself, you have confusion. Like, uh, when you meet, you ask first, the question is uh, whether you are a Wahhabi or a Sunnah, Sunni, whatever. This kind of questions, there is a confusion there is more between than you that, itself. Of course, what right, do you want us to follow? Yes, what is well, that uh, we can exactly come follow and... Uh, the sister asked the question that the non-Muslim sister asked. There is a confusion among the Muslim when you meet, you ask, you are a Wahhabi. Or are you Hanafi or a Shafi or a Maliki? So there's a confusion amongst the Muslims. So what's the reply? I do agree with the uh, non-Muslim sister that unfortunately many Muslims call different names. But when I tell the Hindus to go back to the Vedas, I tell the Muslims to go back to the Quran. Fair enough. Allah says in the Quran, in Fulal Al Imran, chapter number three, verse number 103, Allah says, Wa tasimu bi hablillahi jami wa la Hold the robe of Allah strongly and be not divided. We have to hold the robe of Allah. The robe of Allah is the glorious Quran and the authentic hadith. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Anam, chapter number six, verse number 159, that anyone who makes division in the religion of Islam, O oh Prophet, you have nothing to do with him. Making sex, making division in Islam is prohibited, it is haram. But when we ask the Muslims, what are you? Some say I'm This is exactly the absolutely beautiful message that I got from Islam from reading the Quran by myself because I come from Orthodox Christianity. This is supposedly the original Christianity and after that you have all kinds of divisions, be it Catholicism, be it Protestantism, be it the Mormons and what not. You have a lot of division within Christianity. And when I read the Quran, it redirected my focus onto being a Muslim, simply being someone that submits his will to God. God. This was the purest form of a relationship that you can hold with God. This even transcended my understanding of religion in the first place because religion for me, if you look into such sects, was ultimately man-made. But if we think about this genuine, honest relationship with God, we only can find ourselves being true submitters to God, i.e. a Muslim, of course. And this is why I absolutely loved the message of the Quran. Later on, when I kept on studying Islam, I was wondering myself, why do we have so many sects? Some say I'm a Hanafi, some say I'm a Shafi, some say I'm a Hanbali, some say I'm a Salafi. What was the Prophet? Was the Prophet Hanafi? Was the Shafi? Was the Hanbali? Was the Malaki? What was he? It's nice that people applaud he for this. He was a Muslim. Exactly. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 52, Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, peace be upon you, are the Muslim. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 67, that Abraham, peace be upon him, he was a Muslim. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Fusila, chapter number 41, verse number 33, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَالَ مِنْ مَنْ دَعِلَ اللَّهِ وَعَمِلُ صَالِحَوْنَ قَالَ إِنَّنِ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, works righteousness and says that I'm a Muslim. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad was a Muslim. Allah has told us to call ourselves Muslim. They cannot be a better label than Muslim. Absolutely beautiful. I really wonder how people hate on Dr. Zakir Naik. I heard so many people call him a radical Muslim, some sort of terrorist promoter and whatnot. Meanwhile, he's calling for unification amongst the Muslims. These four great Imams, That's a beautiful message. Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Malik, may Allah be pleased with them all. They were great scholars. I love them. I respect them all. They were great scholars. But all these great scholars said, all these pro Ahima said, that if you find any of my fatwa which goes against Allah and his Rasul, then you throw my fatwa on the wall. Fair enough, makes complete sense. So here if you analyze that all these Imams that came, they came not to make a new sex, they came for the people to go back to the original scripture, the Quran, the Sahih Hadith. So what we have to realize, that I know there are people who say, that isn't there Hadith in which the Prophet said, there will be 73 sects. It's Hadith of Tirmidhi, the Sahih Hadith, Hadith number 171. The Prophet said there will be 73 sects. Prophet didn't say you should make. Right, it was a warning. The Prophet knew that even though Allah says don't make, a bound to make. So the best is to go back to Allah and His Rasul. And the best label you can have is call yourself a Muslim. Any scholar, let it be anyone in the world, let him be the biggest scholar of the world. You ask him for proof. Produce your proof if you are truthful. 
If you're honest, produce your proof. So any scholar, if there's a difference of opinion, you ask him for proof. Get the proof, check it up. Therefore, in my talk, I always give references. What I say, what Zakir says is rubbish in Islam. It is zero, nil. Therefore, I say, Zakir doesn't say, Allah says, Qul hu Allah hu ad, say is Allah one and only. If Zakir says it is rubbish, zero, nil in Islam. If Allah says it carries weight. If the Prophet says it carries weight. So therefore, sisters, Muslims should not be divided. We should call ourselves Muslims and follow the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Anyone who divides the religion, they are going against the Quran. Beautiful. All right, guys, and this is already it for today's video. I thought this was going to be about Wahhabism. Unfortunately, it was not. But nevertheless, it came with an absolutely beautiful message, the pure message of Islam yet again. For me personally, I'm not a scholar, of course. However, the real turning point on Islam came when I opened up the Quran and understood that the religion is Islam, i.e. the submission to God. And the believer is the Muslim, the one that submits his will to God. There is nothing else there. And that everything else then is added to it. The same applies to Tawheed. You have one God, but then people start attributing certain other things to God, be it statues, be it icons, be it other people, saints, etc., etc., you name it. So those are man-made things added onto God. And the same applies, of course, with those man-made conceptualization of what it then means to be a Muslim. However, those are religious fabrications because if you look back, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he was just a Muslim. He was not a Hanafi, he was not a Wahhabi, he was a Muslim. And we go even further beyond than that and we say Abraham, Isa, Moses, they were all Muslims. So this is such a beautiful, pure, powerful message. And every time we go away from that, we are further dividing amongst the Muslims. So I believe this is a very simple but extremely important reminder. We worship one God alone, therefore we are Muslim. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.